Namaste everyone. Namaste sir. Uh, so what are the important points that we learned in the previous class? Can any one of you just summarize? Yesterday's session's important points, can you just summarize? Any one of you? First we learned the relationship between temperature and pressure. Am I right? Yes, sir. What kind of relationship exists between temperature and pressure? Inverse, inverse relationship. Inverse relationship. relationship. Yeah. When temperature rises, pressure falls. We because. know the reason also. When the air is heated, air molecules move away from each molecules. other. Intermolecular space increases. Air density decreases. Air starts rising up. So the weight exerted by the vertical column of air on the air surface falls. So atmospheric pressure falls. So that is what we learned the first. And we have also discussed how to teach this topic to the children. Next to what did we learn? I think we came to pressure belts and planetary winds. Planet. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So we know that near the equator, the temperature is always very high. So hot air rises up. So pressure is always low near the equator. We call it doldrums or equatorial low. Low pressure. On the other hand, along the poles, throughout the year, the temperature is very low. Due to that, the air density increases, air comes down, so weight exerted by the air on the earth surface is very high, so we call it a high pressure area. It's called a polar high pressure area. Then rising air from the equator starts moving towards the poles on both the hemisphere, northward along the northern hemisphere and southward along the southern hemisphere. And as this air is coming to the higher altitudes, the air cools. Then the density increases. So this air will be coming down at around 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude. In that area, high pressure area develops. We call it subtropical high pressure, high pressure area. Melts. So subtropical high pressure area will be formed at 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitudes. Then air moving from polar high and subtropical high meet at around 60 degree north and 60 degree south latitude. And as the air from both the sides meet, the air starts rising up. So in that area, low pressure conditions prevail. So we call it subpolar low. We have northern subpolar low and southern subpolar low. So we have learned this and we also learned how to teach these topics to our children. Next, we came to prevailing winds or permanent winds. See, from subtropical high, both in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere, from subtropical high, the wind blows towards equatorial low. Yes. We know that the wind blows from high pressure conditions to low pressure area. And the wind is normally named after the direction from which it blows. So from the northern subtropical high, the wind blows towards equatorial low from northeastern direction. So we call it northeast trade winds. In the southern hemisphere, from the southern subtropical high towards equatorial low, the wind blows from southeast direction. So we call it southeast trade winds. They are called trade winds because the word trade is a German word. Uh, it originated from a German word tread, which means track or constant direction. So these winds throughout the year blow in the same direction. That is why they are called uh, trade winds. Then we learned that from subtropical high, the wind blows towards subpolar low in both the uh, hemisphere. And uh, these winds blow from the western direction. So they are called uh, westerlies. Then from northern pole, polar high pressure area and southern polar high pressure area, the wind blows towards subpolar low pressure area, subpolar low pressure area. And these winds are blowing from eastern direction. So they are called the easterlies. So all these winds we learned. Then what else? Types of rainfall. Rainfall we came to. 
uh, we know how to teach rainfall it can be taught in the form of a story so story of a raindrop you all remember and types of rainfall we first discussed uh, orographic rainfall or relief rainfall we know that air's capacity to carry water vapor or moisture depends on temperature what kind of relationship is there between capacity to carry moisture and air temperature 40 degrees celsius and uh, is the no, no. capacity only example that that is only example ma'am what kind of relationship exists how the rainfall occur and different types of rainfall uh, we started discussing we discussed orographic rainfall or relief uh, rainfall we know from the uh, water body maybe from an ocean or a sea the moisture bearing wind blows towards the land and if there is a mound along the side of that uh, i mean on the path of that wind the wind will rise up and we know that the temperature and capacity to hold the moisture are directly related if temperature is high air can carry more moisture because intermolecular space will be more so air can carry more moisture but if the air temperature is low the molecules will be closer so intermolecular space will be very less so air cannot carry much moisture so as the air rises up what will happen air cools when air cools air molecules will come closer intermolecular space will become less so surplus moisture will be shed out that is what we call condensation and as a result of that clouds will be formed we discussed it in detail in the last class i hope it is clear to you yes sir okay so that is actually recap of yesterday's session i hope it is thorough now let me ask you a question uh, from this morning onwards or i think from midnight onwards in different parts of tamil nadu drizzling is there light rainfall is there is it there in your places yes sir is it drizzling yes sir no no my lord no sir ah in most of the parts of tamil nadu yes sir we have kumbakonam also kumbakonam also okay even in ranipet morning onwards Uh, it has been drizzling can any one of you tell the reason behind this uh, rainfall cloudy also sir yeah what is the reason why does this rainfall occur cyclone extreme heat because no, the extreme heat the water bodies are heated up no it's this is actually mainly due to cyclonic formation so low far. pressure formation cyclone right yes, sir. Yes, so sir. this is actually Sorry. cyclonic rainfall so the rainfall which is occurring now is actually cyclonic, cyclonic rainfall. rainfall a cyclone is a low pressure area surrounded yeah. by high pressure area high pressure it's a low pressure area surrounded by high pressure area high so pressure. when there is a low pressure surrounded by high pressure what will happen sir usually is it happen only in the oceans i have a doubt i must mostly it so is I formed the, it is yeah the mostly it is formed the, on the ocean ma'am but on the land also it can be formed yeah. but mostly on the ocean uh, the reasons behind it we will discuss later it is coming okay okay thank you sir so now tell me what will happen if there is a low pressure area surrounded by high pressure area cyclone form cyclone 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 all the high pressure rainfall high pressure air will move to the low pressure area low pressure area all area so it is coming actually in the, form of the air will move from all the directions towards the low pressure center from all the directions the air will move towards the low pressure center and the air moves a whirling motion you know what is whirling motion Sir. what is Sir. actually Sir. whirling Sir. motion Sir. It's a cycle. Yeah, in a circular motion, motion, from all the directions, the wind will blow towards the low pressure center. So, from all the directions, the wind is blowing towards the low pressure center. What will happen to the air in the middle? What will happen to the air? The air will rise up. The air will rise up. And you know that this air carries lot of. moisture moisture because it is formed uh, over the ocean surface so what will happen when this air is rising up condensation air cools 
Yeah. Because we know temperature decreases with increase in height. 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 Altitude or height. So what will happen when the air is cooled? What will happen when the air is cool? Tell me, step by step you tell me. Don't go to the Comes final down. one. When the air is cooled, intermolecular space Intermolecule will decrease. Space will be decreased. Will decrease. And what will happen? Surplus moisture. Humidity. Humidity Surplus. will become. Yeah, humidity will become more than 100%. Humidity more than 100% means the air will be carrying more than what it can carry. The air will carry more than what it can carry. So that surplus moisture will be shed out in the form of droplets. And these droplets will cling to the dust particles and form cloud. And when the cloud is cold, precipitation takes place, rainfall takes place. This is what we call cyclonic rainfall. Okay, the process is same, but the difference is in the cause of air rising up. Actually, in the case of orographic rainfall, the air is rising up because the mountain slope will make the air to rise up, the wind to rise up. But here, we have a low pressure area surrounded by high pressure area. So, wind will come from all the directions towards the low pressure center in a whirling motion and as a result of that the air will rise up and as the air rises up it cools and when the air cools its capacity to carry moisture will decrease say for example uh, the air can carry 30 grams and the air actually carries 20 grams no problem at all but the air rises up temperature falls so what air can carry will fall. Say from 30, it becomes 20. So 20 grams air can carry and actually air is carrying 20 grams. So we call it saturated air. Humidity will be 100%. But further if the air rises, the capacity of the air to carry moisture will be less than the actual moisture present in the air. So the surplus will be shed out in the form of droplets these droplets will cling to the dust particles and float in the air. Uh, as they are very light, they float in the air. We call it a cloud. And when the cloud rises up, the droplets will join together. Drop will be formed. And the, as the drop is heavy, it cannot stay in the air. It will fall down and you will call it rain. So this is actually cyclonic rainfall. So now what we are experiencing is cyclonic rainfall. Is that clear? Yes, sir. What is another type of rainfall? Convectional rainfall. Yeah. What is this convectional rainfall? Only for time being, it will be there. Like four mm -hmm. to five, it will okay. fall. It will come. Okay. Uh, actually, this convectional rainfall occur in the afternoon, mm -hmm. mainly due to high temperature. You know, the air surface get heated up. And uh, this heated air surface will in turn heat the atmosphere. So air gets heated up and this air will start rising up. And when the air is rising up, we find uh, a vertical upward movement of air. That is what we call a convectional air current. Vertical upward movement of air, we call convectional air current. Okay. And as the air is rising up, what will happen? What will happen as the air is rising up? It's cooling. Cooling though. Air will cool. What will happen to the going. capacity of the air to carry moisture? It's going down. It will it's fall. Cool. So finally, what will happen? Actual moisture quantity will be more than the capacity. So the surplus will be shed out, cloud will be formed, and when that cloud is cooled, droplets will join together and rainfall will occur. This is what we call convectional yes, rainfall. rainfall. So these three you can teach by demonstration or even role play. Okay, children, a child can act as a orographic rainfall and explain to the other students how does this rainfall occur. So teacher can demonstrate with the help of drawings. Better you draw on the 
board by using chalk piece so that children will easily understand actually so these three types of rainfall you please explain to the children remember it is not a part of the chapter but children must have this knowledge actually i think they are learning in class 7 but still it is our duty yes, to sir. teach them once again so that the children will understand the lesson uh, correctly so i hope you could understand all these three types of rainfall we have discussed in detail yes sir yes sir now what is next actually agri i mean season 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 yeah we'll go on to seasons now one second can you tell me the meaning of the word season what is actually a season season what is actually a season period different level of weather is may be called as yes actually we can divide an year into a number of parts based on the similarity in weather conditions see a particular period in which similar weather conditions are experienced you can call it a season so an year can be divided into a number of seasons based on the prevailing weather conditions in different periods So in India, how many seasons do we have? Four, four seasons. Hot weather season. Four seasons. Yeah, hot weather season Cold or weather summer. Cold weather. Cold weather season or winter. Advancing monsoon season and receding monsoon season. These are the four seasons that we experience in India. It is different from the seasons in Europe. You know, Europe they have summer, winter, yes, spring, autumn like that. Autumn. But in India we have hot weather season that can be called summer also. Cold weather season you can call it winter. Advancing monsoon season and retreating <laughs> monsoon season. Uh, monsoon these season. are the four different seasons. So how to teach these seasons by demonstration and role play? Okay, child can act as a season and explain to children other children what are the important features of that particular season. teacher can demonstrate with the help of drawings shall we go on to the first one cold weather season yes sir when do we have cold weather season in india which months do we have cold weather season in, in this, india december january now december november it starts by the middle of november november to continues till february end november to february yeah so january february and half i mean december january february and half of november and january is the coldest month in our country lowest temperature in most parts of our country we experience in the month of january so mid november to february we have the cold weather season see one important feature of this season is temperature decreases from south to north actually southern parts the temperature is higher but if you go to the northern parts the temperature is very low you know in south do we use woolen clothes even in winter some south do we require woolen clothes even in winter no no, no. whereas north you cannot live without woolen clothes in winter because there the winter temperature is very low so southern part the temperature is higher as you move towards the north the temperature keep on decreasing can anyone you any one of you tell me the reason we have coastal areas in the south yes, area that is one reason okay but what is Mount the yes mountain yeah mountain coastal area that is okay i need one more uh, point most important point himalaya 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 so actually land. there are two reasons yeah there are two reasons the first one temperature decreases from south to north one reason uh, one of you told already 
southern part is peninsula so southern areas are close to the ocean yes. so ocean will uh, keep the uh, what do you say land closer yeah. warm what is the most important reason but where does direct sun rays fall when it's we have winter no 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 winter when we have winter in the northern hemisphere where does the direct sun rays fall suppose we are in we are in the month of january we are in the month of january where will the direct sun rays fall southern hemisphere southern hemisphere exactly if the tropic of capricorn actually direct sun rays will fall uh, in the area between tropic of capricorn and tropic of cancer cancer okay so when we have winter in the northern hemisphere the direct sun rays will be falling on tropic of capricorn south of equator so which region of india is closer to tropic of capricorn south or north south of india south south south, south. south, south india will, so which place will get uh, uh, more heat south south side yeah because we are close to the area where the direct sun rays fall yes so this is one reason south india is close to the equator so direct sun rays are falling on tropic of capricorn so we are closer to tropic of capricorn that is the main reason why south india the temperature is higher whereas northern areas the temperature will be very 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 low actually in delhi and all it even goes to minus 5 degree celsius temperature goes down to minus 5 degree celsius so this point is clear to you temperature decreases from south to north and the reason two reasons are there south india is close to tropic of capricorn the direct sun rays will be falling on tropic of capricorn during winter yeah, winter whereas north india is away from tropic of capricorn yes, another sir. reason south india is actually a peninsula so yes. south india is close to the sea shore and the warm sea will keep uh, the southern parts of india warm so temperature decreases from south to north see sea is warm whereas land is what do you say land temperature is very low in winter can you tell me the reason in winter temperature over the sea will be higher and temperature over the land will be lower can you tell me why because of land land breeze because of a sun rays land breeze sea breeze okay let us go to the reason yeah yes actually uh, we learn differential heating of land and sea yes uh, land gets heat of land and sea land and see sea. land has one speciality land will get heated up very quickly okay. and land will cool down very quickly so in summer temperature over the land will be very high but in winter suddenly land will cool down and temperature will be very low so land is like a lord shiva what is the speciality of lord shiva if he gets angry he will burn everybody with the he will eye. get angry immediately soon even for a minor reason he will get angry but at the same time he will cool down very quickly okay so such examples some some human beings are also like that am i right suddenly they get yes. angry but immediately they will cool down also they won't keep anything in mind so like that only land also land will get heated up very quickly land will cool down very quickly that is why summer temperature will be very high on land whereas winter temperature will be very low on land but sea is like lord mahavishnu what is the speciality of lord mahavishnu he is a very calm and uh, calm person you know Uh, he won't get angry quickly but at the same time once he get angry that's all he will take the chakra 
chakrayuth and destroy everything <laughs> correct now so uh, she is like lord mahavishnu she gets heated up very slowly that is why in winter yeah it cools down also very slowly that is why in summer the sea is cooler because it gets heated up very slowly whereas in winter it is warm because it cools down very slowly i think this difference you understand differential yes, heating of land and sea so land will get heated up very quickly land cools down very quickly so in summer temperature over the land will be very high Uh, whereas in winter the temperature over the land will be very low sea on the other hand gets heated up very slowly that is why in summer it is cooler but it gets cooled down also very slowly that is why in winter it is warm okay now this season is a dry season can you tell me why what do you mean by dry season what is dry season actually no rainfall it is less better dry no rainfall and no rain dry season means very less rainfall can you tell no me rain. why is winter dry period in india why winter is dry in india because the winds are blowing from land to sea is it land yes. winds which which wind will be blowing over india in winda india is in the northern hemisphere we know and most part of india is coming under the area between yes. 30 degree north and the uh, equator yes. so which wind will be blowing easterly which wind is blowing north between north east of trade winds north east trade winds north east trade winds yeah subtropical high to equatorial low am i right yes. Yes, sir. These northeast trade winds are coming from land. See, they are coming. You can see from this direction they are coming. They are coming from land. From dry areas they are blowing. So, what is the speciality of the wind which is coming from land? Without the wind is moisture. coming like this. See, Without this, moisture. You are able to see my cursor. Am I right? so the wind is blowing in this direction northeastern direction so wind is coming mostly from the land and the wind which comes from the land uh, will be dry wind it doesn't carry much moisture moist yeah so it cannot ca cannot cause rainfall that is why major part of india experience dry season in winter but tamil nadu coast coromandel coast of tamil nadu gets rainfall can you tell me why because why it absorbs some moisture coast of tamil nadu get rainfall it absorbs some moisture from bay of bengal yes Land actually bay. the wind is coming from here and due to northeastern yes. parts or northeastern winds from that yeah the wind uh, actually is coming from the land say from bangladesh myanmar and all the wind comes but before entering coromandel coast it blows over bay of bengal so before entering coromandel coast the wind blows over bay of bengal and wind will pick up moisture from bay of bengal anyway we are going towards tamil nadu let us carry some moisture so wind will carry moisture with this wind with this moisture the wind is coming to coromandel coast so it is moist wind so it causes rainfall that is why tamil nadu gets rainfall in winter is that clear and in the indian context this northeast trade winds we generally call northeast monsoon winds so chennai and all monsoon means northeast monsoon and mostly they will be getting rainfall in winter season because before entering the coromandel coast of tamil nadu the wind blows over bay of bengal and this wind causes a slight rainfall in many parts of tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha and all i think it is clear yes sir another area which receives rainfall during winter is the northwestern parts of india these areas 
can you tell me uh, why does this area get rainfall northwestern parts because of western disturbance sir yes what are actually western disturbances uh the winds originated from originated from um, this uh, mediterranean sea am i correct yes. sir yes yes you are correct actually there are some uh, cyclones shallow cyclones shallow means not that deep so there are shallow cyclones which are originating over mediterranean sea in the east and these cyclones travel towards the west sorry mediterranean sea in the west i'm sorry so these cyclones originate over mediterranean mediterranean sea in the west and they travel towards the east east and when they are coming towards the east they pick up moisture from caspian sea and with this moisture these shallow cyclones come to the northwestern part of india and they cause light rainfall in the northwestern plains and uh, heavy rainfall in the himalayan region we call these cyclones western disturbances why do you call uh, them western disturbances why do you call these cyclones western disturbances because it blows uh, from the disturbance come from western part western side why do we call them disturbance why do we call them disturbance you know we should expect uh, the children to ask such a doubts so we have to be ready correct now yes. suppose you say western disturbance a student may stand up and ask ma'am why do you call it a disturbance it is causing rainfall because only no it may not be the season of rain during that period actually the reason you know during winter india is actually experiencing a very pleasant climate low temperature low humidity clear sky light wind so such a pleasant weather conditions are prevailing over india but these cyclones come and disturb this pleasant weather conditions they cause light rainfall in the north western plains heavy snowfall in the himalayan region so the pleasant weather conditions which india experience during winter season gets disturbed that is why we call them disturbances as they are coming from the west we call them western disturbances is that clear yes sir now so that's all about this cold weather season so what are the important points that we learned about cold weather season it is from mid november to february temperature decreases from south to north it's a dry season because northeast trade winds prevail over india tamil nadu coast gets rainfall from northeast monsoon winds western disturbances will cause light rainfall in the northwestern plains and heavy snowfall in the himalayan region a feeble high pressure area develops over northern plains feeble feeble means not that strong weak weak high pressure area develops over the northern plains can you tell me why a feeble high pressure area develops over northern plain these areas a high pressure area develops why when does pressure become high the temperature low when temperature is low actually actually in the in the, in the southern part the temperature is higher as you come to uh, the higher. northern areas the temperature keep on decreasing and northern plains yes. the temperature is very low that is why a feeble high pressure area develops over the northern plains of our country yes. and wind starts blowing outward in all directions from this high pressure area so that's all about cold weather season any doubt about cold weather season teachers no sir clear no sir yes sir now let's come to hot weather season we can also call it summer which are our summer months march to march april and the april, may. may okay and uh, in winter where do we experience high temperature 
ിയായിട്ടുള്ള <laughs> that is the reason why the heat belt shift to the north the area of high temperature will be in the north because we know the sun crosses the equator and sun starts moving towards the poles so that is what we call apparent northward movement of the sun so due to apparent northward movement of the sun just one minute hello uh, one second uh, now same ma'am tell me ma'am Uh, no ma'am no ma'am three guests are there actually four yes ma'am yes ma okay ah yes ma'am driver also yes ma'am okay i'm sorry so heat belt shifts to the north actually in winter the heat belt is in the south because the sun rays are falling vertically uh, in the tropic of capricorn area but we know that sun starts moving towards the north and uh, when you come to extreme uh, summer the direct sun rays will be falling on tropic of cancer so due to that the northern areas the temperature starts increasing so what will happen to pressure over the northern plains low pressure ah uh, low pressure area develops over the northern so plains northern plains so over the northern parts of india a low pressure area develops it's due to rising temperature so north india actually in summer months we find the rising temperature and falling air pressure okay and in the northern parts of india some hot uh, dry winds blow local winds these hot uh, dry winds are called lu lu low winds they are very dangerous you know they can cause sunstroke so people will collapse if their body is exposed to lu because it's a hot wind it's a dry wind okay but in some places lu gives some relief because it causes little rainfall in some areas similarly in assam and in some northeastern parts of india highly destructive winds blow they are called kal baishagi can you tell me why are they called the kal baishagi in the month of uh, festival of baisag yeah baisag month only it goes why it is called the kal baishagi sowing period kal means calamity destruction so it causes a lot of damages to property yeah it causes a lot of damages to property that is why it's called kal baishagi or calamity in the month of baishag baish yeah and towards the end of may you know pre monsoon showers rainfall occur in kerala and karnataka they are called mango showers can you tell me why are they called mango showers because the rainfall uh, in the helps early in ripening mango. mango yes very good very good mango. they help in the they help in the early ripening early of mangoes ripening. so they are called out mango showers so these are the special features of hot weather season so these are the main features of hot weather season you know the season is experienced the in march april and may the belt of highest temperature will shift towards the north pressure becomes low over the northern plains of india hot dry winds start blowing in the northern parts of our country they are called lu they are dangerous they can cause sunstroke in assam and northeastern parts of india uh, some highly destructive winds high velocity winds blow they are called kal baishagi or calamity in the month of baishag in kerala coast and karnataka coast pre monsoon showers occur they are called the mango showers i think all these points are clear to you 
yes sir now we are coming to the most important season advancing monsoon season what is this monsoon can anybody tell me rainy season yeah it's rainy it season is... but what is it actually actually this uh, monsoon is a word it comes from the arabic word mausim it means season sir seasonal ah. monsoon means sir yeah. seasonal means okay anything they else used to sell, uh, you, they used to use this word for reversal season 6 months reversal very, uh, very good 6 months that one very good actually monsoon as uh, ma'am already said the word originated from the arabic word mausim arabic which word. means season even hindi word mausam is similar to that <laughs> we find a lot of similarities between arabic and uh, hindi mm -hmm. so hindi word mausam is also similar to that and the meaning is season even for hindi word mausam the meaning is season and monsoon winds are actually the winds which reverse their direction with the change in season winds which are reverse their reverse direction their with the change in season yeah in one season in summer they will blow from land sea to sea sea to land and in winter they will blow from land to sea can you tell me sea. the reason why why does the wind reverse its direction why does the wind reverse its direction due to uh, difference in temperature and pressure sir yeah due to differential heat you take this as land ah uh, yes summer what happens land gets heated up yeah so what will happen to pressure pressure is low. low low pressure so high temperature and low pressure low. yes but sea gets heated up very slowly yes sea is cooler so what will be the pressure over sea high, high pressure high. high pressure so what will happen from sea to land the wind blows yes am i right yes, yes sir. sir yeah so from sea to land the wind blows so what will happen in winter land cools down very quickly so temperature yes, becomes low no. low temperature pressure becomes high 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 whereas sea cools very slowly so see the temperature is still high and pressure will be low no so from land to sea the wind blows the wind blows okay so in summer the wind blows from sea to land and in land. winter the wind blows from land to sea land to such sea. winds we call by the name monsoon oh, winds because they reverse their direction with the change in season i think it is clear yes sir now let's come to this advancing monsoon season which months do we have advancing monsoon season june to september june july august and august, september. september september yes i already told you by the end of may temperature becomes very high over the northern plains of india because the direct sun rays will be falling over tropic of cancer so temperature becomes very high over the northern plains of india and as a result of that an elongated low pressure area develops elongated means a very long low pressure area develops over the northern plains of our country by the end of may and when you come to june the intensity of this low pressure area becomes very high it becomes highly intense that means pressure becomes very 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 low because of rising temperature and this low pressure area you called by the name monsoon low pressure trough it's called monsoon low pressure trough is that clear yes sir so when you come to the month of june or may end and uh, early june the pressure becomes very low and uh, this monsoon low pressure trough becomes capable to attract air even from the southern hemisphere so winds blowing from subtropical high southern subtropical high to equatorial low what do you call those winds 
sir one second okay i'll show in the diagram one second so this is actually the peninsular india the peninsular part of india okay and this is our equator and here in the northern parts the monsoon not here still north i'm just drawing here what is this central india this is not in central india it will be in the northern plains as space is not available here i'm just drawing it little bit down so this is actually our monsoon low pressure trough okay okay sir so it becomes so intense that the wind which is blowing in the southern hemisphere this wind what do you call from southern right. subtropical high to equatorial right. low southern trade winds south trade winds trade south trade south east south east south southeast south east they are coming from the south east yes sir so these trade winds are attracted towards india by the monsoon low pressure trough the pressure becomes very low here that these winds are attracted so these winds actually they are coming only up to equator but they will be forced to cross the equator and blow from the southwestern direction see actually these winds are coming from southern subtropical high to equatorial low but due to the attraction by the low pressure area these winds cross the equator and uh, there afterwards they start blowing from the southwestern direction then we call them by the name what name do we call them trade winds north trade winds no 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 they are trade winds till equator south but west. after crossing the equator they start south blowing from the southwestern south direction south yeah, west we call them by the name southwest monsoon winds west monsoon winds yes yes south. very good so we call them by the name southwest monsoon winds so this is how the southwest monsoon winds originate they are actually the northward expansion or extension of the southeast trade winds and they are actually coming up to the equator only but they are attracted towards the indian subcontinent by the monsoon low pressure Why trough yes. so after the attraction of this low pressure trough these winds after crossing the equator starts blowing from the southwestern direction so we call them by the name southwest monsoon winds oh, monsoon clear southwest monsoon winds monsoon. we call them by the name now by early june the arab actually the indian peninsula will divide these monsoon winds into two branches what are those two branches can you tell me arabian sea branch and bay of bengal branch arabian sea branch and bay of and bengal bay of ben branch branch it is the indian peninsula which is dividing the wind into two branches one is actually arabian sea branch and the other one is bay of bengal branch bay of bengal branch yeah Arabian Sea branch strikes the Kerala coast in early June. Kerala coast, what is the speciality? Parallel to Kerala coast, mm -hmm. what is there? Western Ghats. Western Ghats. Western Ghats. These Western, Western Ghats will force the wind to Sanna. rise up. Rise up. These Western Ghats will force the wind to rise up. Rise up. What will happen when the wind rises up? Wind cools. condensation takes place clouds takes are formed and it Don't. rains heavily in the kerala coast that is why the june july and all heavy rainfall in kerala it's due to the western ghats western ghats will force the wind to rise up wind cools condensation takes place clouds are formed when clouds are cooled rainfall occur so kerala coast gets heavy rainfall another branch of the arabian sea branch will strike gujarat coast and it will blow over rajasthan but doesn't cause rainfall in gujarat and rajasthan can you tell me why aravalli why the southwest because of the presence of aravalli range 
Aravalli Hills, it is not uh, uh, striking the wind instead of that. It is parallel to yeah. the wind. Parallel to the Aravallis are located parallel to the wind direction. <laughs> See, the wind is blowing like this. Aravallis are located like this. So it cannot block the wind. You just imagine if Aravallis were like this and wind is coming like this, even Gujarat, Rajasthan and all would have got heavy rainfall. But unfortunately, Aravallis are lying parallel to the wind direction. Because of that, these winds cannot cause rainfall in uh, Gujarat, Rajasthan and all. So this is the story of, of what? Arabian, Arabian sea, sea, branch. sea Branch. What happens to Bay of Bengal Branch? It will go and stuck on the Himalayas. Bay of Bengal branch is going towards Myanmar. Because here also one low pressure area is formed. <laughs> Middle of Myanmar also one low pressure area is formed. So these winds are directed towards Myanmar. But along the Myanmar coast one mountain is there. What is that mountain called? Garo Kasi Yeah, I think. No, no. Myanmar, this is Arakan called Arakan Mountains. Arakan Arakan it's called Arakan Mountains. Then, Arakan. So this wind will go and dash against Arakan Mountain. You know, Arakan Mountains are very steep mountains. Say, if the mountain is like this, like our Western Guards, the wind will rise up. Am I right? Yes, yes sir. But Arakan Mountains are like this. So what will happen? The wind comes, dashes against the mountain, get deflected. Change its direction. Yeah, it gets deflected. Did you understand now? So it is due to the change, due to the difference in the shape of the mountain. So these winds dash against Arakan mountains and get deflected towards the northeastern parts of India. Sorry to these areas, to northeastern parts of India. So, northeastern areas, we have some mountains. What are those mountains called? Kasi. Garo, mountains, Kasi, correct now? Garo, Kasi, 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 yes. Yeah. All together, they are called yeah. Puruanjal mountains. Am I right? Yes. 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 So under the influence of Puranjal mountains, they cause heavy rainfall in the northeastern states of India. So northeastern states are getting rainfall from the uh, Bay of Bengal Bay branch of, Bengal. of the monsoon winds because they are deflected towards our northeastern India by the Arakan mountains located along the coast of Myanmar. Okay, so here... We know that the Arabian Sea branch strikes and cause rainfall. Here another sub-branch will strike, but it cannot cause rainfall because Aravallis are located parallel to the window direction. Parallel. Yeah, and after crossing uh, the Western Guards, they will blow over the Deccan Plateau, crossing less rainfall because uh, it's rain shadow area. And these winds also will enter into the Northern Plains and together they overrun the country for nearly four months and cause considerable amount of rainfall in different parts of our country. Now, I think you got an idea regarding the occurrence of rainfall in our country. So please demonstrate it in the class with the help of map, uh, drawings, diagrams and all. Yes. Clear? Yes, sir. Now... Which are the rainy parts of our country, can you tell me? The areas where heavy rainfall occur? Coastal areas of Kerala, Karnataka. Yeah, one is actually western coast. Yes, one is actually western coast. Western coast, we know the reason. The Arabian Sea branch will strike the western guards western and it is forced to rise up. So it will cause heavy rainfall along the western coast. Then northeastern India. Northeastern India, the rainfall is heavy because the Bay of Bengal branch gets deflected. Arakan Mountains will yeah, deflect the, the Bay of Bengal branch mm. and they will come to the northeastern parts of India and under yes. the influence of Purwajal Mountains, heavy rainfall is caused. Low rainfall areas, northwestern India. 
we know the arabian sea branch is blowing over northwestern india but no mountain to block them and moreover it's a hot area so air capacity to hold the moisture will increase so low rainfall similarly you know interior parts of deccan plateau because it's a rain shadow area it is located uh, east of uh, western ghats rain shadow area so these are the low rainfall areas of our country clear teachers yes, yes sir. sir so is advancing monsoon season clear to you all yes, yes sir. sir please explain please explain to your children with the help of drawings uh, map uh, diagrams and all you demonstrate it in the class you can also later after teaching you can uh, go for role play also one child can act as a as a season and explain uh, what will happen in that particular season so the such teaching methods or questioning method can be used what is the last season actually yes, retreating monsoon retreating monsoon retreating monsoon season monsoon. what do you mean by retreat what is retreat coming back reverse and <laughs> withdrawal <laughs> withdrawal correct no Drama. actually in uh, yeah in army parade and all they have beating the retreat correct no towards the end of the parade all the flags and everything will be folded and a little bit uh, sad uh, mood music will be there so that is they call beating the retreat say for example a sports meet is going on last day the sports meet end day uh, all teams flags and all will be brought down and uh, the athletes will be going back to their places so that is what we call beating the retreat so retreat means withdrawal here who is withdrawing or what is withdrawing monsoon wind monsoon winds monsoon will wind. withdraw Ma why monsoon winds withdraw see actually this happens in october november months october november months actually retreating a uh, monsoon season occur can you tell me why the monsoon winds withdraw in october november mr westerly winds uh, monsoon wind become weaker why monsoon winds South become weaker monsoon wind become weaker because temperature starts falling because sun starts its southward movement when you come to october november sun will start moving towards the south sun has reached till top tropic of cancer then it starts southward movement so as the sun is moving southward temperature starts falling in the northern plains so when temperature starts falling what will happen to pressure high high pressure pressure start It rising become high yeah so when the pressure is increasing you know the pulling power actually this low pressure area only was pulling wind from the southern hemisphere you know that pulling power decreases so wind becomes weaker 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 and ultimately by the end of november you know the wind will withdraw from the indian peninsula so this season we call retreating monsoon season actually during summer we know the low pressure conditions existed over the land but when you come to this winter the low pressure conditions get shifted to the sea and uh, the wind from the land will be blowing towards the sea so this low pressure area gets surrounded by high pressure area cyclones start forming over bay of bengal that is another speciality of this retreating monsoon season see october november we will be getting holidays for few days due to rain in tamil nadu correct no yes this rain is mainly caused by these cyclones which are formed over bay of bengal the low pressure conditions that once prevailed over the land get shifted towards the sea and that results in the formation of cyclones and these cyclones visit odisha coast andhra coast tamil nadu coast and causes lot of damages to men and the property 
so this season is called retreating monsoon season advancing monsoon season is experienced in the months of june july august and september by the end of may the monsoon low pressure trough formed over the northern plains gets intensified pressure becomes very low intensity becomes very high intensity of the low pressure area becomes very high and now this low pressure area is capable to pull the southeast trade winds southeast trade winds of the southern hemisphere so southeast trade winds are attracted towards the indian landmass by this monsoon low pressure trough so southeast trade winds after crossing the equator start blowing from the southwestern direction towards the indian landmass due to the influence of the monsoon low pressure trough now they come from the southwest and we call them southwest monsoon winds indian peninsula divides this winds into two branches arabian sea branch and bay of bengal branch by early june arabian sea branch strikes kerala coast and under the influence of the western guards these winds cause heavy rainfall along the kerala coast or malabar coast and after crossing malabar coast i mean after crossing western guards they blow over deccan plateau causing less amount of rainfall another branch of arabian sea branch another sub branch of arabian sea branch strike gujarat coast and blow over the northwestern part of india but does not cause much rainfall because there is no relief feature to block the winds aravalli mountains are there but they are located parallel to the wind direction so they don't force the wind to rise up and cause rainfall the bay of bengal branch is directed towards myanmar because in the interior of myanmar also one low pressure trough is formed but they are blocked by the arakan mountains located along the coast of myanmar yeah and they get deflected towards the northeastern parts of india so these winds enter the northeastern states and under the influence of the purvanchal mountains they cause heavy rainfall in the northeastern parts of our country then they blow over northern plains causing considerable amount of rainfall so together these two branches run over india for nearly 4 months and cause good amount of rainfall in different parts of our country so this season we call advancing monsoon season 